Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about unofficial memory upgrades for the brand new Synology DS220 Plus. To say brand new it's been around for a few weeks now and this device does have an officially supported memory maximum of 6 gigabytes. In, indeed that is 6 gigabytes of DDR4 memory across 2 gig that are soldered onto the main controller board of this device and an additional internal SODIMM slot that allows you to add 4 gig of official Synology DDR4 2666 megahertz SODIMM memory. So, before we go any further with today's video, just like all of my other memory videos, let's get that disclaimer nailed down because this is very important. It's not just me trying to clean my hands legally. It is about you protecting your data. These things are likely going to have all of the data you own on them in one form or another, or at least the most important data. So if you are going to do any of the stuff in today's video, you need to have all the facts at hand. Number one, the reason I'm doing this is so in many cases, you don't have to do it because there's no guaranteeing that today's video is a success, whether it, we see the internal memory on this or later down the line, inconsistencies in that memory can affect your overall storage array. So if you're going to do the things in today's video, have at least two tiers of backup strategy, USB, NAS to NAS, NAS to cloud, snapshots, RAID, different kinds of either backup or redundancy should be in place before you try this. And also at the end of the video, I will show you guys how to run an internal memory check on your NAS that you should do periodically to double check that your memory is okay. But let's talk about unofficial and official memory there. This device is only supposed to be utilized by official Synology memory. Now, the reason being is that Synology say if you are utilizing unsupported configurations on this device, they can't provide you tech support because you're using something that's unsupported. You are using the device in a way that it was not advertised or indeed built to be used. It's not a question of them going, ah, invalidate your warranty, good night. It's about them saying a device can do xyz if you change the parameters then xyz isn't necessarily going to happen so do bear that in mind but today we're looking at the time tech memory this is probably by and large the most budget memory i've seen out there you can get eight gig for about 30 odd nicker maybe 35 pounds and if you shop around you can get the 16 gig module for a about 60 pounds give or take and i know that will translate into euros and dollars and stuff like that depending on where you shop and later on in the video we'll show you precisely what that memory module is but both of these we're going to try the 8 gig and the 16 gig module inside our ds220 plus here now bear in mind firstly that this device i've already installed dsm on it i used a default 2 gig of memory that was inside I then put two Seagate hard drives inside, Seagate Ironwolves in a RAID 1, in an SHR, sorry, and then installed DSM. Put the latest software, uh, the latest firmware update, and then powered it down. So I've already removed the hard drives in preparation for this video. And if you have a look on the inside, you can see that SODIMM slot right there where we put our upgrade. I will also highlight the fact that Synology state, once again, that this is a 6 gig maximum model. The CPU inside the J4025 officially supports 8 gig, but I know because of the architecture of the way Synology have built this, they, there's no such thing as a 6 gig memory module. So that's kind of the 6 gig maximum there to stop people using unofficial memory or putting in an 8 gig stick and therefore going over the recommended maximum. I kind of get that. I'm not a huge fan of uh, memory that's not the same capacity, but given I'm going to try and install an 8 and a 16 gig, who's a hypocrite these days, right? So... First we're going to go for is the 8 gig memory module, that 35 quid model there. And again, this uh, memory module, the specifications are available. And if you don't feel brave enough to do this yourself, you can always contact the guys at span.com where they do pre-built installations with unofficial memory inside. Or you can just go to the link to NAS Compares in the description that will show you all the different options open to you, both official and unofficial. Just know what you're doing, right? So we're going to install that memory module inside. It's very straightforward. There's like the slot, it will measure up, and even when you put it inside, it will click. Make sure both of the arms are in the slight indents on either side of that memory module. As you can see there, we've installed that. I'm now gonna take this unit over to the test area, I'm gonna plug it in, boot it up, and the theory is that it should boot fine. We are utilizing single rank memory for the eight gig model, but we're using dual rank or DR memory for 
the 16 gig. Now that's very, very important. This CPU inside here generally has difficulty with memory where each of the individual modules are too big. And a 16 gig module that's single rank, and that means all of the chips are on one side, results in each one of those chips just being too big. Whereas a single, I'm sorry, a dual rank module has chips on either side with each chip being one gig in size, equaling eight on either side and therefore 16 overall. And that's what's important because on a single rank module of eight gig, it's still eight chips. So you've got eight one GBE uh, modules of um, Hynix high, high memory on that main board. So make sure, particularly in the larger capacities, that you go for dual rank, DR, not SR. You can have SR in some eight gig modules, but once again, I would still try to get dual rank modules regardless because it's just easier on the system to adopt them. But it's been a hell of a long intro, hasn't it? Let's get this booted, booted up, see if it sees the 8, and if it sees the 8, we will install the 16. And then at the end of the video, if all things are successful, I will show you guys regardless how to run a memory test on your Synology NAS. Let's make our way to the test area. Right, so we've installed our 8 gig memory module of TimeTech memory and we've booted up the DS2020 uh, or 220 and I'm pleased to confirm that it has been seen. If we log into it for the very first time, again, that bog standard password which Google is going to keep warning me about, uh, we can go ahead and log into it. We can have a look at the control panel, we'll have a look at the resource monitor and of course we will use Virtual Machine Manager to assess um, if we can allocate that memory to a virtual machine. Now, once again, we go to the control panel here, we can go into the info center, and I'm pleased to confirm that 10 gig of memory, that's the two gig that the 220 arrives with by default, combined with the eight gig that we have installed. If we carry on moving forward, we can take a good look at the general benchmark settings, and again, we're not see with there's lots of inconsistencies here on screen if we go to the memory we can see a lot more but it does seem to be a little bit grayed out and i do think there's slight graphical glitches and this should be marginally expected just because again we are running an unsupported system when we're using the nas with hardware it was not designed to use so do bear that in mind so next if we make our way into the virtual machine manager we can set about creating a nice default virtual machine area and see if we can pre-allocate some of this memory. So we're going to click create, we're going to go for a Windows uh, VM, we're going to put it on the main storage area. We've only got two cores, so we're going to play it safe and go for a one core VM. But as you can see, we can allocate quite a lot of memory. We're going to go for seven gig of this 10 gig of available memory just to be on the safe side. Uh, because we do want to have some memory to run this system. We're going to click next. We're going to name the VM. We're going to go ahead. We're then going to assign some storage. Let's go with 250 gigabytes. We're not going to download the Synology um, system tools. Um, ISO, I do recommend, just moving forward, if you ever play with ISOs on a Synology NAS, I cannot recommend the Synology guest tool enough. It's got loads of drivers. That will allow you to um, set up a Windows VM and indeed some other VMs very, very easily indeed. Uh, but apart from that, we're not running any ISOs for Windows itself. We just want to have a look at the general BIOS of this VM. So we're going to carry on moving forward. We're going to power the VM, VM after creation. Click apply. And now it's going to create our VM. So while we're doing this, let's go into the task manager and we're going to see a few things. We're going to see for a start the amount of memory being used by Synology's Virtual Machine Manager leap up, and it's just done that at 7.22 gigabytes, and the amount of available memory has shot up, along with, of course, we're utilizing one of the cores of our two-core CPU, hence that CPU utilization leaping up to 50%. Now that Virtual Machine is running, we've allocated a significant amount of memory, and indeed, we've allocated enough memory that would be larger than this system is supposed to support. We're not seeing any Windows installation because this is a non-boot uh, disk or recovery disk uh, VM. We're just running a standard sandbox VM environment, but there's our 7 gig allocated and that one core of the CPU pre-allocated. So 
I think that's enough to see that it will at least uh, see and claim memory from this allocated time tech module that we've installed. But the real test is going to be long term. And if you are going to utilize a device like this, then and you are going to use unsupported memory, I should say. Once again, I do strongly recommend you take advantage of the memory test facility in Synology Assistant. By doing that, what you need to do is install Synology Assistant that finds NASs on your local area environment. Go to the little cog at the top and there's an option right there. It won't be ticked by default, but tick that box for memory test and it will appear. Then right click and you will see the memory test option and this will run a test on the memory modules inside the Synology NAS and it will also reboot the NAS and make it inaccessible for the period of the test which can take minutes or hours so do bear that in mind but I recommend if you are going to be utilizing unofficial unsupported memory um, non-first party memory indeed on this device then make sure you periodically check uh, your memory with that diagnostic tool as well as of course having a multi-tiered backup and recovery system in place, a system of different backup options and RAID options. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna shut down this NAS. We're also gonna shut down that VM first. Um, I'm gonna force shut down, although you shouldn't really force shut down. It's the equivalent of holding down the physical button on a PC, which can always be very damaging and detrimental to the operating system of your VM. So I don't recommend you do it. But now we've shut down that VM, I'm gonna go ahead and shut down the Synology DS220 Plus so we can prepare to install the 16 gig time tech module. And again, the units we're utilizing today is the 16 gig module here and the eight gig module here. There will be links to this in the description along with a whole bunch of recommendations and advice. Do bear in mind that the single rank version you can get away with on this model at least because of the spacing of the individual cells. But once you start looking at bigger quantities, you will have to ensure, particularly on the 16 gig ranks and in some 8 gig ranks, to go for the dual rank model. This will ensure that each one of the chips on that memory module are 1 gig in capacity. And the CPU inside this NAS does struggle. And I've probably said this at the intro, but again, it never hurts to remind you guys at home. So now the NAS has shut down, I'm gonna go over, uh, wait for the disks to spin down, and then I'm gonna install the 16 gig TimeTech budget model and boot up the NAS again to see what happens. Let's fast. Okay, so the DS220 Plus has now rebooted with the 16 gig TimeTech memory module. I've already done a rescan of the network, but I already knew that it had popped up anyway from the page before refreshing with the same IP. And as you can see, it is available. And if we go into the device here, we'll be able to have a look and see exactly what's happening with our new unofficially un unsupported memory module. Once again, Google's gonna tell me that password is wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, it's because the password is the word password, which is fairly shoddy. But for the sake of this testing and the fact that it's gonna get wiped afterwards, I think we can let that go. So. As last time, we're going to go into the control panel, we're going to go into the resource monitor, and of course, we are going to boot up Virtual Machine Manager. Let's have a quick look in the control panel first, and from there, we can see that there is our 18 gig, the 2 gig that the unit arrives with by default, and that is included with the 16 gigabyte TimeTech DDR4 2666 dual rank SODIMM module we have installed. So now we've installed that, we can have a look at the memory monitor and uh, the resource monitor. We're gonna go straight into memory there. And again, we're kind of getting that weird fadey thing there, but for the most part, it does look like the memory composition bar is fairly standard uh, as it was before. We can go into the task manager there in the background as well and look at allocation. You can see there, we'll list it by memory. We can see virtual machine manager there running in the background. Um, we don't really need to full screen that. If we go into the virtual machine tool, there will be that VM that we had before. And at the moment it's set at seven gig, just like we did during our original testing. But what we wanna do is now we're playing around with a lot more memory than that. Let's bolster this bad boy up a little higher. Let's go to 15 gig of memory for this VM area. Click okay. And this should have readjusted that to 15. And then we can go ahead and power on our VM. 
So while it does that, because by the looks of things, it does look like it's at least going to see this memory module. I know you guys think I'm being way, way too overcautious talking about the likes of um, triple backups and memory consistency checks and unsupported uh, configurations. But I do strongly recommend that you bear in mind with these tests these are a microcosm, they are a small test and they do not indicate how this memory will behave long term in your storage system. So you have to bear that in mind. So make sure you keep doing your memory tests by using the memory assistant uh, diagnostic tool built into Synology's assistant program. On top of that, make sure you've got your, at least your two tier backup strategy on top of your NAS, not including your NAS, NAS to NAS, NAS to USB, NAS to cloud or more, as well as the likes of snapshots and a good RAID working in the background because you are using an unsupported setup and this is something Synology will not provide you support for because you're using a configuration like this. So do bear that in mind. But I'm going to wrap things up here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do visit the link in the description to NAS Compares for the full breakdown of all the different third-party memory that we have tested successfully and unsuccessfully on all of the new Synology NAS systems, as well as QNAP and a few other brands. And visit the guys at span.com who provide fully built, um, unofficial memory upgraded solutions with lots of testing done in the background for your needs and peace of mind. But bear in mind, you will have to buy a completed solution with drives from them so they can perform all the tests. But do check that out in the links in the description. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed this. Click subscribe to learn more. And I will see you next time.